in this playlist of let's crack NPTE exam this is our lecture 3 we will discuss MCQs and their description in this playlist first MCQs is injuries healed by secondary intention which involve large bound separation while in case of primary intention it involves smaller wound separation although the process of healing does not have clear cut delineations clinicians recognize that healing occur in three phases there are three phases of healing inflammation proliferation and remodeling phase which of the following occur during the inflammation phase what happened in inflammation phase neutrophil migration occur in this phase option d is correct neutrophil migration occur during the inflammation phase within five to six hours of injury neutrophils are released to remove the debris from the injured side neutrophils are white blood cells they remove the debris or waste product from the injured site these cells are replaced by the monocytes and macrophages now the after the five to six are monocytes and macrophages replace the neutrophils wound contraction occur during the remodeling phase now note this in the remodeling phase in the last phase wound contraction occurs wound size decrease increase proteoglycin and extracellular collagen collagen is a protein collagen senses occur during the proliferation phase this is the second stage and what happen in this increase proteoglycin and extracellular collagen senses now note this what happen in the inflammation phase what happen in the remodeling phase and what happen in the proliferation stage now mcqs number two a female patient complained of low back pain leg pain and the weakness in the leg and foot is diagnosed with the lumbar disc herniation disc is herniated lumbar disc herniation is best described by which of the following statement in the lumbar disc herniation it involves localized bulging of the disc with annular fiber damage this is the nucleus pulposis and almost 20 to 25 are the annulus fibrosis in case of lumbar disc herniation there is a annulus fiber damage and the bulging of the disc on the localized bulging of the disc let's discuss this lumbar disc herniation involves slipping of the intervertebral disc intervertebral disc present between the two vertebrae if this is intervertebral disc this is the above vertebrae this is the below it involves slipping of the intervertebral disc through annulus into the spine and the option b it involves injury to the corticospinal tract this is true if in case of it describes a spinal cord injury option c describe arthritis what is option c it involves synovial hypertrophy and clonic inflammation of the facet joint it option c describe the arthritis condition and the option d narrowing of the spinal cord everyone knows narrowing of the spinal cord is spinal st lumbar stenosis if there is narrowing of the spinal canal lumbar stenosis all the options we will discuss and the true option is option number a so let's discuss mcqs number three the rotator cuff is a group of muscles and tendons that depress the humeral head against the glenoid cavity of scapula the rotator cuff include all of the following of the following except Rotator cuff includes supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. These four are rotator cuff muscles, teres minor, and all these three. Which is not rotator cuff, serratus anterior. Serratus anterior is not a rotator cuff. 
ऑप्शन डी स्ट्रेटस एंटीरियर स्टेबलाइज दी स्कैपुला वट इज़ द रोल ऑफ स्ट्रेटस एंटीरियर स्टेबलाइज दी स्कैपुला अगेंस्ट दिस चेस्ट वॉल डोरेटर का कंसिस्ट ऑफ इंफ्रास्पाइनेटस सब स्कैपुलरस सुपरास्पाइनेटस एंटीरियज माइनर इंफ्रास्पाइनेटस एंटीरियज माइनर मसल स्पोर्ट एक्सटर्नल रोटेशन नोट दिस द सब स्कैपुलरस हेल्प इन द इंटरनल रोटेशन एंड द सुपरास्पाइनेटस डू एबडक्शन abduct the arm at the shoulder almost 0 to 15 degree of abduction provided by supraspinatus then more than 15 degree of deltoid this is the mcqs number 3 stratus anterior stabilize the scapula note all the muscles functions these are very important mcqs number 4 the modalities of for the application of cold and heat are used in various clinical condition it's essential that the physical therapists take advantages of these modalities of these modalities to manage and prevent certain disorders and injuries which of the following indicate accurate difference between the effect of heat and those of cryotherapy or ice therapy heat therapy reduces spasticity caused by the upper motor neuron lesion in case of upper motor neuron lesion there is spasticity and the heat therapy reduce this part as spasticity cold therapy decrease spasticity this is the uh, this is the accurate difference between them let's discuss this heat therapy reduce spasticity whereas cold therapy also decrease spasticity caused by the lesion affecting the upper motor neuron lesion upper motor neuron lesion there is increased spasticity and both heat and cold therapy decrease this spasticity uh, heat and cold therapy decrease muscle spasm heat increase tissue metabolism while the cold decrease the tissue when there is heating there is increase the temperature and the increased the temperature leads to increase metabolism while the cold in case of cold therapy vessels become constricted and there is decreased tissue metabolism heat therapy decreases the ability of muscle to sustain contraction while in cold therapy about 27 celsius increase muscle contraction heat therapy relax the muscles okay so remember these important points and note them mcqs number 5 joints also known as articulation when two bones meet it form articulation or region where two or more bones meet joints are classified into three types diarthrosis amphiarthrosis and synarthrosis this classification is based according to their function this is the classification three types which of the following is an amphiarthrosis amphiarthrosis is the vertebral joint in which there is a slight movement occur let's discuss this a vertebral joint is an amphiarthrosis or a slight movable joint remember this shoulder and hip joint it is a diarthrosis or freely immovable joint while the skull sutures are the example of synarthrosis which is immovable joint done with this mcqs next mcqs number 6 a therapeutic exercise program usually consists of three steps that have to be followed follow sequentially to be effective the first step of the program consists of exercise that aim to regain flexibility and range of motion although flexibility and range of motion exercises are commonly interchanged they are technically different to consider which of the following accurately describe flexibility which condition describe it refer to the mobility and length to which muscle can extend the length to which muscle can extend determine the flexibility of a muscle flexibility refer to the mobility and length to which, which the muscle are extend this is the definition of flexibility in flexibility indicates that a muscle not a joint has impaired mobility when there is impaired mobility there is inflexibility option a and c refer to the range of motion 
what is option a option is the refer to the amount of movement possible at a given joint it is determined by the strength and mobility of the joint capsule it refer to the range of motion and option d refer to the muscle strength it refer to the maximum force when there is maximum force when there is strength that a muscle or a group of muscle can exert in case of muscle strength there is maximum force required mcqs number 7 cryotherapy has the main effect of cooling the tissues it is the ice therapy or cold therapy although the techniques of using ice are cold application for treatment differ the physiological response to cryotherapy are consistent the following are the physiological response to cold therapy during the first 15 to 20 minutes of cold exposure except which is not included in the physiological response of cold therapy that is decrease orthogenic muscle inhibition let's discuss this and uh, this mcqs the right option is the m a it's uh, wrong highlight this is the decrease tissue stiffness option number a cold therapy increase tissue stiffness which is not correct about the cold therapy that is the decrease tissue stiffness in case of cold therapy we will uh, see the here it increase tissue stiffness cold therapy increase tissue stiffness because it involve in contraction of the muscles while the heat therapy relax the muscle cold therapy may also cause decrease temperature tissue destruction increase or decrease inflammation decrease muscle spasm and lower the metabolism we discussed this in Uh, previous two three mcqs before this is the indications of the cold therapy physiological response remember this it increase the tissue stiffness decrease the temperature tissue destruction increase or decrease inflammation and decrease muscle spasm and lower the metabolism mcqs number 8 shoulder is the most mobile joint in the body but because of its wide range of motion it is one of the most commonly injured joint the shoulder consists of the humerus glenoid cavity of scapula also includes scapula clavicular clavicle acromion and the four other joints which of the following is the commonly dislocated joint in the shoulder commonly dislocated joint in the shoulder is gh joint that is the glenohumeral joint gh joint is the most commonly injured joint in the body this joint consists of capsular and ligamentous constraints that surround the musculature and the glenoid labrum it these provide strength to this joint because of the lack of bony stability because shoulder joint is less stable the glenohumeral joint is at the risk of injury MCQs number 9 low back pain is frequently caused by lumbar disc disease which is influenced by the aging and degenerative cascade what is the nomenclature specific to the lumbar disc disease that involve breaking off of the disc fragment from the nucleus pulposus what is the nomenclature specific to the lumbar disc disease that is the disc sequestration in which there is involved breaking off of the disc fragment from the nucleus pulposus that is disc sequestration this is the last stage of disc degeneration disc sequestration is the separation of the disc fragment from the nucleus pulposus in a disc bulge what happen annulus fibers are tear this is the mild condition in which annulus fibers are tears protrusion of the disc involve localized bulging of the disc with damage annulus fiber this is the more severe condition bulge then we have protrusion and the disc extrusion involve the extended bulge with destroy annulus fibers the disc is intact in this case whereas in the disc sequestration there is separation of the disc fragment from the annulus fibrosis first we have a bulge protrusion herniation or extrusion then we have disc sequestration
Next, the MCQ is number 10. A female patient complained of moderate joint pain and morning stiffness last longer than 30 minutes. Remember this. The patient has a reactive rheumatic rheumatoid factor. The patient is diagnosed with the rheumatoid arthritis in which there is rheumatic factor alter. This neuromuscular disorder is the best described by which of the following statement. It is the chronic systemic inflammatory disease due to the immune complex disorder in which there is rheumatic factors C-reactive uh, protein and alter. It is the inflammatory condition of rheumatoid arthritis in which rheumatoid arthritis there is chronic systemic inflammatory disease due to the immune complex disorder. Option number C is correct. RA or rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic systemic inflammatory disease due to immune complex disorder. It is an autoimmune disease in, con in contrast to osteoarthritis and this in the RA the stiffness lasts longer than 30 minutes. Remember this. In contrast to OA or osteoarthritis, this type of arthritis mainly affects the small joints such as the uh, interphalangeal joint. In the osteoarthritis, major joints affect, while in case of rheumatoid arthritis, small joints affect. Option A and D describe osteoarthritis. Option A, what is option A? In which there is wear and tear, it is a degenerative disorder. Osteoarthritis occur in old age and it cause wear and tear of cartilage and it is a degenerative disease that affect the weight bearing joint. These A and D represent the osteoarthritis. Option D describes the osteoporosis. What is in the option B? Age related metabolic disease. Yes, it describes the osteoporosis. In this lecture, I will discuss the 10 MCQs. And now we will complete the 30 MCQs and their complete description. If you have any question, you can ask. Thank you.